Toyota created the Grand Highlander to sit right above the Highlander and its cramped third row and the Sequoia, which has a large SUV that not every family wants. They just want a little more space in that third row and that's what you get with this machine right here. This is the Hybrid Max and it provides the most amount of power for this Grand Highlander with a combination of some decent gas mileage. So let's go check out the powertrain that you get in this. The Hybrid Max comes standard with all-wheel drive. It's a 2.4 liter turbo four-cylinder with two electric motors. One sandwiched between the motor and the six-speed transmission, the other is powering the rear wheels. That combination provides 362 horsepower, moving this three-row SUV to 60 miles per hour in 5.6 seconds. It has power, but what about efficiency? Well, you're going to get 26 in the city, 27 on the highway, for an average of 27 miles per gallon. I really do enjoy the way that this looks. I, I think I may even like it a little bit better than the Mazda CX-90. It is a little stylish and a little sporty at the same time. So I think Toyota did a great job here. Now let's go check out our cargo area, see how much space we got back there. If you've watched any of my reviews, even if this is your first one, go down, click subscribe. And it'll help me get more of these vehicles to bring to you guys. So I'd appreciate it if you went down, hit the subscribe button. So of course this is a three row SUV. It does have a powered lift gate. And looks like we've got about 20 and a half cubic feet back here. Decent amount of space. There is a powered outlet here. You got a JBL speaker in the back also and some ventilation on this side. Now drop in these third row seats. You press the handle right here, push it forward. It's gonna drop the headrest and then drop the seat. Same thing here. Now you have about 58 cubic feet of space. But what about dropping the second row? All right, and now with that second row down, you have 97 and a half cubic feet in here. I am pretty sure you could get a four by eight sheet of drywall or OBS in here without any problem. Probably even have some room to spare. Here's your door panel. Nice brown leather right here. It is soft for your elbows. You got all your window controls right here and memory seating. This little carbon fiber look plastic is actually pretty nice. Decent sized door pocket. Moving inside, you do have power front seats with lumbar, or leather seats with perforation for heat and ventilation. Heated seats come standard on the Grand Highlander, as well as a heated steering wheel. Ventilation comes with a whole bit higher trim levels than the base model, but you can see this is a really nice colors that were put together here. You've got some brown, you've got some bronze here on the steering wheel and around the dash. So let's get inside and take a little closer look at all of this. So this does come with a 12 inch digital cluster and you also get a 12 inch infotainment screen. The lower trims, I believe either have a seven or a nine inch um, instrument cluster screen, but I believe it is also digital. This is really nice screen. It's really bright. I like the colors on it and it gives you a lot of information. Don't worry about the mile per gallon that's on there. Uh, we haven't driven it very much since we've got it, and uh, so that's not gonna be very accurate. You can see right now the engine is providing power to the battery. This is really nice with this bronze going around here. This is your cruise control. You got your adaptive cruise lane centering, which is really nice. It works really well and then your speed adjustments here. On the other side, you have your voice and your stereo controls, and that just kind of changes. This over here kind of changes your instrument panel up here. You can change kind of how some of the items that are up there to look at. Uh, look around here, you do have this nice little tray right here. I like that, and a USB-C plug right there. That is really nice for the passenger 
that is a huge plus. Ah, it's nice. This is all nice and soft leather right here. This up here is a little bit harder plastic, um, but not too bad. There's, it doesn't really matter who's touching that or who's going to do anything with that piece of plastic up there. So that doesn't bother me. I don't care about that. Um, so we do have a heads up display. It's on this trim level. Do have your camera view. So you have a 360 camera view. This is going to swirl around. And we can go here. So there is a bird's eye view. So your infotainment screen, um, it doesn't hold a whole lot of information, but you do have your stereo stuff up here. You can go into your settings and that's where you're gonna put in your Bluetooth uh, phones and stuff like that. The general information here, um, just a few little things that you can change there. Go into the car. That's going to set up you set up your climate for the rear, the front. Um, you got a few different options for like an eco heat and eco cool, which is pretty nice, and a de-icer for the front windshield. Um, if we go back, your energy flow. So right now it's showing that the engine is sending power back to the battery to charge it up, and it's also going to run the front drivetrain. Of course, the battery you can see controls this motor, electric motor back here. This is the first electric motor that is sandwiched between it and the transmission. It's pretty cool to see all that and you can watch that while you drive. I, I like that function. I think it's pretty cool. Some people really don't care, I'm sure. And then you have your vehicle alert, which tire pressure warning, which is not active anymore. Down here, you have all of your climate control buttons, which is really nice if you're one of those people that really like to have buttons still. So you've got your heated seats on both sides, your fan control, there's your thermostat right there, and you, have, you can turn on auto, which is nice. It actually works really well. Uh, rear climate, press the rear climate, it's set on auto. So it's set on 72 degrees, so that's good. You can set recirculation. Vents right here with your hazards. Come down here, you do have another USB-C here, another USB plug here. Now this one is a data plug. This one is your charging plug. All right, we come down here. We have another cup holder. Now look at the size of that cup holder versus those cup holders. So there is your mega cup holder, and that will be suitable for most people. My wife's bottle, I still don't think it'll fit in there, but it is larger than most others. And so then you got the other two cup holders right there. Gear shifter. This is kind of that funny one that you have to put it into reverse. You push over and up. Just pushing over goes into neutral. Pushing over and down goes to drive. And then you pull down one more time to go into manual if you want to shift yourself with the paddles. We'll go on back here and we do have this big center console. It's actually very, very large. If You can see how big that is. In the front here, we do have our drive modes. Um, you do have your traction control. There's a snow mode, downhill descent control right there. So we have mud and sand, rock and dirt, sport, and eco and then normal. So you turn the dial this direction and it goes to mud and sand. And then you go the other direction, rock and dirt, eco, which does that. And then you press for sport. So this piece right here, it just slides back and then that has everything in it. This has a little tray in there. We can take that tray out and then you can see how deep that is. So that actually is the length of my elbow all the way down. So that is a very, very big storage area. Really, really nice. Let's check the glove box, whether you need a glove box or not, but you can see how many manuals are in there. It's pretty full just <laughs> with the car manuals. All right. Do have this giant panoramic roof like we talked about, and it is, huge looks like it does open 
So that's nice. I'm not going to open it right now. Uh, but other than that, that's it. And a sunglass holder. Way to go, Toyota. Okay, that's pretty much it here in the front. Let's go get in the back and see how I fit in that second row. And then we'll pop on back to that third row. I'm not sure how tight it's going to be back there, but let's see. Let's get in this second row. Driver's seat is in my driving position. This seat is as far back as it goes. Uh, and I have about probably three to four inches of space here. It does have a handle on the side that you can grab and you can slide forward to get some room to the back if you need to. Right here, I am still comfortable. I'm just barely touching the seat and my head, I still have about an inch or so. I'm about six foot. So that's good there. Um, so let's get in here and let's take a look at this back and I'll show you what all's going on back here. In the second row, this does have a nice brown leather back here. Pretty soft there where your elbow sits. You got a little holder right there. Got a little something in there. I think it says maybe a bottle. No, no bottles will fit in there. That's what that says. I don't know why they did that. I ought to be pretty, pretty easy to figure out. Maybe you can set your cell phone in there. It does have the sun shades for the back. Does the brown leather seats. Now they do have the Alcantara in the center, which is really nice. They are heated and ventilated back here. Let's get on inside. So as you can see right down here, you do have heated and ventilated seats here in the back. You have your own climate control back here, which is really nice. USB-C here and a USB-C on this side and a 12 volt plug underneath. That's pretty nice. Your vents here are also above your head and you have this great panoramic roof that is over the top of you, which is really nice. You do have a center console in this one and you got two cup holders right here. Looks like maybe you can set your cell phones on each side there. So you could see that I fit in here okay, uh, but what about the third row? Let's go see how much space is back there. Okay, so I have given some room to the back. I am in a good position right here. I still have about an inch to my knees. I can still relax just a little bit. And I can even, if I tilt this seat back just a touch, get in a comfortable position to ride. I'm good right here. Now let's see how much room I have behind me. All right, so let's try to get in the back here. So you, you have a handle right here. We're gonna pull that. That's gonna go down, it's gonna slide open. And you have a decent amount of room here. It's a little foot pad here. And just step up inside. And I'm in. And I actually am pretty far back here. Um, but so far, this looks good. Let's pull the seat back. The seat is set to my comfort where I was at earlier. Still could go up just a little bit more if I needed to. But you can see back here that my knees are still just about touching the back here. I probably could use a little bit more room, um, which this person could move up just a little bit. My head, <laughs> if I sit up straight, my hair is touching. Uh, my head is not quite touching it, but there is this piece right here. It's kind of in my way. Um, my head's kind of against that. These seats do recline. So do have a handle right here that I can pull and relax my seat back. Now, I can go all the way back like this if I want to. And now my hair is kind of touching in the back, but, but you can see just doing that gave me a little bit more knee room. So that's not too bad then. Now you do have a USB plug there and you have a USB-C also on the other side. There are two cup holder, well, technically, it's almost three cup holders because don't you have like one, maybe two and three? So yeah, you can fit quite a bit in here and that's on both sides. So plenty of amenities back here and you do have vents up above your head. So that's nice. So there are dedicated vents for the third row. It's a huge plus. That wraps it up for the third row. So let's go out and talk about some pricing on this Grand Highlander. Let's talk about pricing now. 
The base Grand Highlander XLE starts at $43,070. The hybrid XLE starts at $44,670. Now, if you want a hybrid max platinum, which is what this one is, it starts at $58,125. And this one, with all of its options, the destination fee, this one comes in at $60,130. All right, you've seen the inside and you've seen the outside. Well, how about we go take this for a drive? But before we do that, go down, click the subscribe button and hit the like button so more people can see this. So it also spreads out farther and I have the ability to get more of these type of vehicles to bring to you guys. So don't forget, hit subscribe real quick, then we'll get out on the road. I really have not driven this very much. Um, I've only driven <laughs> into the store about three miles and back. So this is really my first time driving this car, which <laughs> it's a very large. It feels large. It, it feels composed. It's very, very composed, but it does feel large, uh, especially coming out of our Hyundai Tucson that we drive. Um, this is a lot larger. Um, you know, and it is kind of rainy and nasty. So we're gonna try to do a zero to 60 here in just a minute, but we don't have that great of pavement, but we do have all wheel drive. So we might get a decent um, speed out of that, but um, it's more just for you guys to be able to hear the sound of the engine and see the acceleration that it does have. Because 362 horsepower is pretty stout. It really is pretty stout, and it's very, very good for this size of vehicle. I don't think that I would want to go down to the standard hybrid, which is 245 horsepower. I just don't feel that it's going to have the power to move this vehicle around very much because of the size of it. I think it's going to struggle. So my suggestion is to get this hybrid max even though the price is a little bit more and you lose a little bit on your gas mileage. But overall, it has a lot of power. So let's go hop around here. I'm gonna put it into sport mode. All right. We'll do a little brake torque. Ready? Three, two, one, go. There's 60. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it didn't like the brake torquing. Let's get around here and get a little straight. We'll do it one more time without brake torque and see what happens. Didn't seem like it really accelerated that fast, but this is a very large vehicle also. So you need to think about that. There's nobody coming. So we'll stop right here. We'll do one more, no brake torque. Ready? Three, two, one, go. That was a little bit better. And we are over 60. So yeah, it, it says 5.6 seconds, but it sure does not feel like it. And maybe because we do are on wet pavement, maybe it's partly because it's just not getting the good traction. I didn't see any traction control lights flashing or anything like that. So, you know, I don't know. It just didn't feel like it was 5.6 seconds. So far driving this, um, I really do like the interior. I think it looks really, really nice. This brown and the copper and stuff really does look good. Um, I would be my, it would probably be my choice um, if I was going to choose the interior for the car. I feel, feel, I feel like I'm small in here. <laughs> I just feel like this is really big. It's a really wide center console person sitting clear over there, there, I was not looking at the road apparently, so it had to let me know. That is the thing that I dislike the most um, about the technology that's coming out now because I think there really needs to be some way of shutting that off. Uh, if you are hands 
on driving. You have your hands on the steering wheel and you're, even though you're doing this lane centering, the eye tracker should not have to be activated if I have my hands on it. If I am driving hands free, then yes, eye tracker should be on to make sure that I'm watching where the car is going at all times. I understand that. I just don't think it's necessary if I have my hands on the wheel and I'm doing lane centering, then I don't need the eye tracker. So that's just how I feel about it. You guys let me know down in the comments how you guys feel about it, but yeah, it's just not a thing for me. I don't know, it's gonna take me some time to get over <laughs> having the eye trackers in cars. But um, infotainment screen, I like just because it's simple. There's not a whole lot of stuff in it. You got all your climate control buttons underneath. Uh, this feels like it's driving really well, um, you know, you when you're going back and forth you can feel the weight of the vehicle when you corner but the one thing that this does is is when you take a sharp corner like that it actually was slowing me down when i was going back and forth like that and shifting the weight the car was slowing down to try to keep me steady you know the stabilization in this vehicle so uh really really nice I, but I, I do like it. The steering wheel gets really warm. Uh, I like that it gets hot in the places where you're supposed to hold the hold the steering wheel and your two lower pieces here. Not so much here in the top and the middle. Uh, it's pretty nice. Um, it'd take me a little while for me to get comfortable in here because I'm not used to this big of a vehicle. But a lot of space up here. I feel there's enough space up here. Second row decent amount of space there. Third row, it still feels a little tight back there. Um, but I am six foot. I ain't, and this is, if you need something bigger than that, if you need something bigger to put, put three adults in those rear seats or two adults in those rear seats for a long period of time, you're probably going to want to step on up to the Sequoia. That's where you're going to have your full size SUV and you're going to have a lot of room in that third row. Um, I, there's just not a huge amount of room still in that third row. It's definitely better than the Highlander though. So if you're just needing that little extra, this is the way to go. Um, the hybrid max system also, I, I think 27 miles to the gallon, that is actually really, really good. Um, I just drove the Kia Telluride. And although it's a smaller three row SUV, it had a good amount of size on the inside. It only averaged 20 miles to gallon. Um, so I think this being at 27, I think this is really going to hit the right spot for most people. I would really like um, to have a SUV, an SUV that has power like this does with 362 horsepower that has gas mileage at 27 miles per gallon. That's really, really good. Uh, if you're not subscribed yet, please go down and subscribe. The more subscribers that we get, the more vehicles that I can get, the better vehicles that I can bring to you guys and get, let you guys see everything about these. Uh, so please subscribe, hit the like button, and I will see you in the next review.